Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm going to answer this uh, in its entirety and uh, solve the problem of why some patients are still unhappy with their totem knees in 2023. So it's not all doom and gloom, as we've heard today. Let's not, let, let's not lose sight of the fact that total knee replacement for the majority of our patients is a very successful intervention. Uh, and certainly over the last 50 years since its inception, uh, results have improved, but seem to have reached a ceiling. Um, it's now one of the most frequently formed elective orthopedic procedures worldwide, uh, and it has pro proven in affecting, in reducing pain and improving function. Uh, it's also cost effective. Uh, and for most patients, it changes their quality of life dramatically, as I'm sure we all have experience of. Uh, and now, uh, the survivorship uh, on the registries is showing that it is, uh, in terms of uh, implant survival, uh, as good as, uh, uh, as hip replacement. So this is uh, just some uh, cumulative survival data from the NJR, uh, last published NJR was 2021, uh, and that's the, the results for, for knee replacement. And it's quite a, quite, quite a tight plot, uh, but it's more or less the same trajectory as hip replacement over the same time frame. So despite these uh, good results, uh, we're obviously not going to be complacent. Uh, and whilst the majority of patients have uh, good outcomes, there's this uh, unfortunate figure that one in five of our patients are not satisfied with their knee replacement. Uh, and when we compare that with the hip replacement, I was surprised to see that meta-analysis actually showed that 9% that of patients after total hip replacement uh, complain of ongoing discomfort and dissatisfaction. That's not something that we talk about at hip meetings, but certainly 20% is something that's regularly uh, mentioned at knee, knee replacement meetings. This is probably becoming even more significant because the, the uh, demand for total knee replacement is increasing, particularly in younger patients. So in, in the US, it's predicted that by 2030, over 50% of knee replacements will be done in under 65s. And these are patients who certainly have higher uh, functional demands and expectations, but also the registries would believe, lead us to believe that they have increased uh, revision rates. So, Firstly, there are the treatable causes for an unhappy patient following knee replacements. And it's important that we exclude those before we group them as this unexplained group of dissatisfied patients. So any patient that comes up and requires a full workup to, to exclude those treatable causes, and obviously the most uh, common would be uh, uh, low-grade infection in particular. Uh, but when I have excluded all the, what I believe to be the, the, the treatable options, um, I find it very useful to make sure that I've, I've asked the patient about their preoperative symptoms in terms of pain, disability, analgesic usage, uh, and also get a, a view of the preoperative x-ray. Uh, and it's always a heart sink for me when I look at the x-ray um, and find out that you know, I wouldn't have offered them uh, based on just looking at the plain film and x-ray, or that the decision to proceed to joint replacement was based either on an arthroscopy or an MRI scan. So the, the, the main causes of failure and patient dissatisfaction are obviously these. These are in order of frequency. And as I mentioned before, asymptomatic loosening is the uh, most, most common. Um, but in with that, infection, progressive arthritis, and that's potentially uh, um, progression of arthritis in an unresurfaced patella. So there is a a groundswell of opinion as to whether you should be replacing the uh, patella routinely, which we don't do in the, in the UK. Uh, uh, instability, implant wear, uh, and stiffness. So what is patient satisfaction? Now, this is very difficult to, to quantify. There are patients, as I'm sure we've all seen, who we believe as surgeons have a very good technical outcome. They've got great looking x-rays. They may even have a very good functional uh, range of movement, but they're not satisfied. Uh, and in a, in a bid to try and uh, take the surgeon out of the decision-making, prom schools were int introduced to get an idea of patient satisfaction that was not uh, subjective with regard to the, the surgeon's opinion. Nonetheless, the relationship between patient satisfaction, I, are you happy with your joint replacement, uh, and the prom score is not well, well established, which you know, may surprise some people. 
Uh, the majority of studies uh, feel that in order to have a satisfied patient, you must have a functional outcome that meets their preoperative expectations of where they would be following their joint replacement. Relief of pain, um, and those two are the main determinants. So if you can fulfill those, you stand a better chance of having a satisfied patient. Obviously, as surgeons, we want to try and influence that. Uh, and the same is true of implant companies that are trying to uh, get us to, to use their products. So there have been lots of, uh, of bids made for improved technology leading to improved outcomes. So be that the implant design, be that the constraint, whether they're fixed bearing, mobile bearing, uh, the, the kinematics of the uh, implants from the medial pivot, which has gained a lot of uh, popularity recently, to uh, those bicruciate retaining implants that, that uh, were potentially going to provide a, a more anatomical range of movement and better patient satisfaction. With uh, 3D printing, uh, custom-made implants are also available. But with all of these, none has been proven to be more superior than another and certainly don't change that 20% of patient dissatisfaction. So what about the technique? Again, this is something that's within our gift to change if it were to give better outcomes for our patients. And people have, uh, have look, looked at the uh, surgical approach, be that quad sparing, mid vastus, uh, parapatella, uh, whether you resurface the patella or not, as I've said. Then we've looked at increased precision of our bony cuts. Uh, Firstly, with, with NAV, moving to PSI, and now to robotics. Ligament balancing uh, is clearly important for a stable, uh, well, well-functioning knee. Um, and that has, there's evidence to suggest that that could be improved with uh, robotics, uh, though uh, well, I'll come on to uh, that later. Uh, we've mentioned in the last talk about the, different, the new alignment um, whether to move from an anatomical uh, um, or a mechanical alignment to a, a, a kinematic alignment. Um, but again, as highlighted there, apart from a few studies which show short-term outcome, there's no long-term benefits in terms of patient-recorded outcome or satisfaction. <laughs> So what, what else uh, can we do to try and improve the outcomes? Well, uh, the, the patient experience is something that I think as surgeons, we, we perhaps are not um, quite as engaged as we could be at times. Certainly, if we listen to our patients and understand what their expectations are, we can tell them whether they're realistic or not. Uh, and with increased education, having a joint school, which means that they, they're aware of exactly what will happen to them in the immediate pre peri and post-operative phase of their, their treatment certainly helps uh, with patients' uh, satisfaction of that experience. The hospital experience is something that's been looked at particularly in the States because they've linked that to remuneration for, for institutions. And that's been shown to have a big um, influence on patient satisfaction. Uh, enhanced recovery programs. Earlier on today, we looked at the, the uh, uh, day case uh, surgery. And whilst day case may be perhaps a a step too far for a lot of our patients, certainly patients who spend less time in hospital have better outcomes. That may be because the hospital experience is better for them or their pain's better controlled. Uh, and certainly pay, pain relief is a big thing. Hit knee replacement is a very uncomfortable operation as we see from our patients. And the more we can do to mitigate that, the better. So um, this paper shows that early post-operative pain uh, has a direct correlation not only with outcome but also patient satisfaction at two years. So if we can improve pain scores, we'll be uh, getting more satisfied patients. Uh, this uh, uh, cohort study also uh, showed that meeting preoperative expectations, patient satisfaction and pain relief in the post-operative period was very important. Uh, and then these are strategies from America to try and improve that patient experience even further. So it's far better to avoid creating an unhappy patient than to deal with one uh, once you've already got them sitting there post-operatively in front of you. So there are characteristics which can identify the, the increased chances of having a poor outcome, um, though there's not one single characteristic. 
And it's, it's hard even with, with regression analysis to identify these patients preoperatively. Um, but uh, certainly higher expectations, higher pre-op function, lower stages of arthritis and disproportionate pain and symptoms uh, are uh, generally associated with a poorer uh, outcome post-operatively. So in summary, uh, the management of the unhappy knee replacement is difficult, uh, especially when you could, would consider that they have a technically well-executed procedure and a successful clinical outcome. Uh, incremental changes in implant design Implantation techniques seem to have stalled improving outcomes, and perhaps, as was again mentioned on earlier today, we should focus on optimizing the modifiable patient factors and improve patient selection. But chasing this, as I've termed it, the elusive 20%, has led to great developments in research and progress and technical development within knee replacement. Thank you. <laughs>